Hello, and in this video we're going to have a look at the over function. And I've got two questions in my Udemy course that have to do with partition functions in the past week. So let's have a look at them. I'm Philip Burton of filecats.co.uk. So my first question is, we've got this as a data set. So this is the input. So what the student would like is we have a 10 to start with, and then we've got a 10.3, then 10.62. So we add up all of column C and column B until column B changes. And then we just have what's column B and we start afresh. So what I need to do is to be able to draw in a line basically here. So all of this is one partition and then here down to row 16, all of this is another partition and 17 to 21 is another partition. And we can do this using the over. Now I've got this into a temporary table. Drop table if exists, that works from SQL Server 2016 or above. So here is my output. So exactly the same output as we've got over here as the input. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is show you what the over does. So I'm going to now say, can you give me a sum of B, so that is my total. So you can see we've got a problem because I'm using sum and sum is an aggregating function and I should have a group by, so that's not going to work. But what I can do is say, I want you to do it just as far as a certain place. So I could say over. So I want you to do it, well, I want you to order it by column A, and I want you to sum up all of the range, all rows, between the very beginning, which is called unbounded preceding, and the current row. So if I execute that, you can see that we've got all of B adding up, and then all of B adding up to 30, all of B adding up to 60. So it's like a running total. So I've got to say what order it's going to be by, and then I've got to say what I want to total up in terms of the number of rows. So, so far, so good. So what I can do next is add in 6C, and exactly the same thing. So if I do this as a comma to start with, so this is total B, and this is total C, then you can see we now have total B and a total C. So total C is cumulative all the way down to the bottom. So let's add them up. And here you can see the answer. So we are adding up an integer with something that's not an integer, so it becomes a not integer. So that answers the question, except I need it to restart at row 11. So what I need to do is say, okay, this one, rows one to eight, that's my first set for you to do that. And then nine to 14, that's my second set. And 15 to 19, that's my third set. So is there anything here in column B, which if I did together, says this is my first, second, and third? And the answer is yes, if I do exactly the same thing, but instead of using sum, I use count. So if I counted, here, these four, that would be one. So I'm in partition one. If I counted these, then that would be two. So I'm in partition number two. So what I'm going to do is use the with statement. So with allows me to do a temporary table. So I'm going to do a temporary table called input two. The hashes or pound signs here, they're just to show that these are temporary tables and not to be stored. So I'm going to say input two is going to be a count of B and exactly the same over as we've got before. And I'm going to call that D. So if I now just do a select of input two, so I'll just comment all of this out. Oh, and I need to put where it's from. So this is from input. You can see that now we've got all of this in partition number one, all of this in partition number two, and this in partition number three. 
So the only thing left is for us to say, okay, can you take care of these partitions? So I don't want to start from the very beginning of the entire table. I want to start from the very part beginning of the partition. And that I can do quite easily by saying partition by. And I'm partitioning by column D. And exactly the same thing here. So now if I run this, and I've got to change this table so it uses this temporary table, then you can see that we have 10.3, 10.62, 11.02, and so on, all the way down to the end of the first partition. And then when the second partition starts, then we start at 20, and here we start at 30. But hang on, we have a null. Why is that? It's because we're adding 10 and null, and 10 plus null equals null. So I just need to change this sum so it reacts to nulls as well. So I'm just putting if it's null, so it is null, then make it zero. And there we can see there's your answer. So we start off at 10, then 10.3, 10.62, 11.02, and so on, through partition one, and then we get to partition two, and then partition three. And then Let's just finish the task off. We just want to see A, B, and C. So that's A. That's our new B. And then we have a C. So that gets rid of any unnecessary rows. So it's got to be in this order. Partition by, order by, and range between something and something. So I do go through this in a lot more detail in my course, but these are the elements of the over and you can see how useful they can be. So let's have a look at my second question. So I have got a similar thing. What they want to do this time is to say, okay, whenever action changes, then I want a new target value, but I want it resetting for each ID. So question, what is our partition? Our partition, in other words, where I want things to restart. It is the ID. So whenever the ID changes, it restarts. And then whenever action changes, even if it changes to an earlier version, then I want this target value to go up by one. So here's the same table, except I have got an additional column. My additional column is an identity column. So one that goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc. Because I need to be able to order by something and keep it in this order. So let's do similar sort of thing. So what I need to do first of all is have a difference column. So it's a one if action is different from the previous partition and a zero if it's the same. So again, I'm going to use my trusty with, with very useful. So I'm just going to put exactly the same thing in here, just so you can see how to build a with. So I can literally just put my original statement in there, call it something else, and then say select from that. So that absolutely works. So what I need now is a new column. Let's call it diff, where if this row is different from this row in that partition, then call it zero, otherwise call it wrong. So if, and you can also use case and other things like that, the action column for that particular row is equal to the lag of the action column, comma, one. So what does that mean? It means look at this row and go back one row. So if it's the same, then give me a zero. Otherwise, give me a one. So let's run that. And you can see uh, the function lag must have an over clause. Now I can put in a blank over clause, but I'll need to actually say what is partitioned by. So over by, order by, and I'm going to order by my ID2 column that I've got there. So we can see that when action one changes, then we get a one. When action one doesn't change, we get a zero. But hang on, I also need to do something else. I also need to partition it by the ID, because here you can see, Action one remains the same, but the ID changes. And I want it to have a one. So what I do is I put in 
a partition. So partition by ID. So when the ID changes, then I want a one because when that happens, lag of action comma one is null. So action is not the same as null. So let's have a look. Does it work? Yes, it does. So the final thing I need to do now is just count up the diffs. So we do a sum of diff. But I need to do it over a certain range. So I want to order by ID2. Now, if I don't put in the range, then the range by default is between unbounded preceding and current row. Now, there is a difference between rows and range. We get onto that in, again, a bit of detail in our course. So let's have a look at this. So now you can see the target value increases and increases and increases. So I need to call it as target value, but it doesn't reset. So when ID changes, I want this to reset to one. So I need something else. I need a partition by. So I say partition by the ID column. Now notice I'm not doing partition by ID comma order by. There's no commas here. So that's a very common mistake. Don't put in commas. And now when I execute, you can see that the target value resets itself whenever the ID changes. And it will always start at one because the very first action, unless it's null, is not going to be the same as the lag, the previous row in the partition, because there isn't a previous row in the partition. Well, I hope you found this useful. So you can see how useful over can be if you've got a group of rows and you want to say, add the last two rows and the next two rows and the current row together. You can do that in an over as well. You don't have to go back all the way to the beginning or all the way to the end, but you can do if you want. So this is how we can use over while using aggregation functions using sum and count. And because the computer is expecting a different answer in each row, I don't need to use group by. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you like it, then please click the like button. And why not subscribe and click the bell next to it so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you for watching this and keep learning.